lower before we get to the prelude. <laughs> Um, the courthouse has decided that they need to redo the parking lot, and this was the weekend they chose to do it. And they obviously worked real hard on it yesterday in the rain. <laughs> so thank you for your flexibility. We appreciate it, and um, we are glad that you are with us. I have a handful of announcements. We'll start with this, because I didn't write it down. So if I don't re write it down, it might not exist. OK. And it's right side up. We're doing great. So this lovely, one of a kind, cannot be recreated. There will never be another like this in the entire world, right? You, it could be yours for the price is right. We are silent auctioning this. Sherry made it. Oh, Sherry, I see some threads. <laughs> we'll trim those. <laughs> anyway, the silent auction sheet is downstairs. The winner will be announced next Sunday. It is currently up to $50. I know. And all of the money from this particular silent auction goes right back to the craft group, which they used to buy supplies that they used to make things that they sell at the bazaar, oh. which funds the church. Thank you. I know. There's so, that's, like, that's like a big if you give a mouse a cookie. If you buy this, we'll buy more fabric. Because <laughs> as you'll know, we don't have enough fabric. That is a true statement. <laughs> okay. The, the PFLAG group is hosting a garage sale today at 421 5th Street. It's just that way. Today from 9 to 3. Um, I've been told that all of the good stuff is still there because it rained yesterday. So <laughs> if you need some stuff, you can just walk right over after church. That's 421 Fifth Avenue. Fifth Street. Thank you. I wrote street. I just apparently was making stuff up. I know. It's, it's just that way. Um, okay, and then... <laughs> Actually, it's just that way, because I know what block we're on. Geography was obviously not my strong suit. Um, Crafts is meeting on Wednesday from 9 to 4, 4 ish, and everyone is welcome. If, even if you don't have a craft project, Sherry will help you find one, and you can work on your own crafts or you can work on church crafts. Um, Pride in the Park is next Saturday, June 15th from 12 to 2. It's at the Lions Pavilion at First Street Beach. See, I did it right that time. Um, and that is a family-friendly event. There are things for every age and every person. Um, the Manistee Community Music is having Choirs in the Cathedrals concert June 21st, right here in this building at 7 p.m. Several members of this congregation sing in that choir. Tickets are $10, and they're available for purchase at the door. So put that on your calendar. Okay, we're almost done. Um, also, we are collecting books for our used book sale. And those can be brought in any time and dropped off into the room that used to be the nursery, and now there's an air hockey table in it, so we don't know what to call it anymore. I think we're going to name it room number two. <laughs> which will be really efficient <laughs> and work with our constantly changing usage of each room. Um, and then we're going to set up for the book sale on June 20th, starting at 10 a.m. until we're done. And the book sale it itself is June 21st and 22nd. So bring in your old books and then come back and buy new books. Okay, and last but not least... We are looking for docents or tour guides to help on July 5th and 6th from 11 to 2. You don't have to commit to 11 to 2 if you could help from 11 to, you know, noon. Um, and it's really easy. All you need to do is be able to smile. I'm seeing a lot of them. And say, hello, welcome. <laughs> If you can help with that, please talk to John, and he'll be happy to give you the official training. It will look like this. Hello. Welcome. See, everyone can do it. 
Those are our announcements. As always, we light our candles as a reminder that God's light shines in even the darkest of corners. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the music of the prelude. Please rise if you are able for the call to worship in your bulletin. We give you thanks, O oh God, with our whole hearts before all creation we sing your praises. We bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your world above everything. On the day we called, you answered us. You increased our strength of soul. Though we, Though we walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve us against our adversaries. Your steadfast love, O Holy One, endures forever. And now our opening hymn, number 53.
Friends, please be seated. O Holy One, your love indeed endures forever. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit this day as we worship together in beloved community. The realm of your love. Be with us in our singing and our praising as we share the word together. Amen. As we gather in worship, let us take this moment to consider our need for transformation and forgiveness. I invite us into a quiet moment of personal prayer for our own needs of grace. Let us join together in the prayer of confession. Dear God, the creator of all things based on love, you created us in your image of love, and there have been times we have fallen short of that love, not only to you, but to each other and all of creation. I ask for your forgiveness from you. Present today, my siblings, sisters, and brothers in Christ, I thank you for the comforting strength and compassion of the Holy Spirit to do better in bringing love and grace and all I do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and therefore we speak and the affirming knowledge that we, when we turn to God with our shortcomings, we are renewed in God's love by the grace of Christ. Amen. Friends, I invite us to greet each other, those who are worshiping with us here in person and those who are worshiping online with the peace of Christ. All right, I'm going to invite my friends to take their seat. And if my young friends want to come sit up front, you are welcome to, or the young at heart. I think Kate's going to sit up front with me. Oh, good, I get some other young friends. Excellent. You won't miss out. This will be great because I brought in embarrassing photos of me. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so I'm going to... Um, I'm wondering, who's heard of the word kingdom? Kingdom. Oh, Dency. Yeah, but you have a leg up, Dency. <laughs> kingdom. K-I-N-D-O-M. Sort of like kingdom, but not misspelled. It's, it's a different word. Kingdom. So sometimes when we talk about God, we talk about the kingdom of God. Definitely not to be confused with kingdom. They're two different things. Because the kingdom of God refers to us. 
right? Everybody in this room. Because the word, what, does anybody know what the word kin means? Some. Want to tell us, Kate? Just whispering it. Nobody can hear a <laughs> whisper. Does it mean family? It does mean family. Good job. Well done. I'm going to have to, I can't do this. I have too many things. Okay, so it means family, and we are, a, we are a family of God, right? We're a people and a community, and, and we have all gotten together and sort of become a group or a congregation, right? And we, we do this because we have similar ideas about Jesus and God, and, and this is a family way. Kingdom is a really fancy word to talk about family, so I brought in some family pictures. This one, I don't know why I own it, because it's so big. <laughs> this is what happens when you have adult parent, when you are an adult child and your parents get divorced. They send you eight by tens of you from fourth grade when vests were very fashionable. <laughs> it is a piano vest. Okay, <laughs> I had a piano recital that year, and I needed a piano vest for it, and I wore it with my stirrup pants. It was a big deal. <laughs> we were very, I was very fashion forward. So yeah, these are, this is my family. Like, I'm related to these people, you know, I, I kind of look like them sometimes, like, because that's my mom and my dad, and that's my brother, and he really is related to me, even if I don't always want to admit it. And this was from our Wednesday and Pugsley Adam era. <laughs> yep, good look. But there are other kinds of families, because here's another family portrait of mine. I am related to my brother, because we brought him to that camp. But this is my church camp family. And all these people and I met when we were probably Eliza's age. And we're much older than that in this photo. But we grew up together at church camp. We spent a week or two or three every summer together. And that's how you form your own family, right? You have friends and who has friends who are like family? Right? Excellent. Okay. I'm going to give my cool device to Kate there. She's going to do me a big favor. Because I also have this family portrait, which is... <laughs> that look a little familiar? Some of us are in that. This one's pretty old, though. You're not in that. I don't even think you were born when they took this photo. Because <laughs> how old are you, Carl? You're five? Yeah, they took this photo before I came, and I came nine years ago. But I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> because this is our family photo, and it's kind of a big deal. That's why it's in this really, you know, lightweight, non-important looking frame. But I thought we should take a new family photo. So I sent Kate up to the balcony. And she's going to, we're going to take a family selfie. Yeah, Kate, you got to go to the center. Yeah, I'm going to let her do it. Okay, so everybody has to look up at Kate and kind of smile. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. Just hit. <laughs> yeah, Bill, you got to scoot closer. You. <laughs> you got to scoot closer. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's not an exact science. It's okay. <laughs> Yes. Well done. <laughs> okay, good job, Kate. <laughs> All right. So, 
now we have a new family. Don't worry, I will not be replacing that photo in there with that one, but I might hang it somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for recreating our newest family photo, because who was here nine years ago or when they took this? Not, there's a lot of us that aren't re You were, you were not. <laughs> That's why we needed to take a new one, so you could be in it. <laughs> a lot of us have come since that photo was taken, and it's good to take a new photo sometimes. That might find its way into our new portrait directory that is coming soon. All right, friends, thank you for helping me explore what it means to be family. Let's take a moment to pray together. Yeah, I don't trust it. Like, I've the children and phones, and you're related to some of them. So let's pray together. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways you connect us as one family. Help us to remember that everyone can be our sibling, our brother, or our sister. Help us to love and include more and more, increasing the size of our family, the size of your kingdom, and making more space for one another. Amen. The first reading is from 2 Corinthians. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and therefore we also speak because we know that the one who raised Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will present us with you in his presence. Indeed, everything is for your sake so that grace, when it has extended to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For our slight momentary affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen, for what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Other ancient authority... Oh, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens.
Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebub, the, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called to them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand and his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying, tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called to him, and the crowd was sitting around him, and they said, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. And then he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother, the word of God for the people of God. This scripture is um, not fun to preach on. It's divisive. And most of the time these days, things that feel divisive don't feel good, and we try to avoid them. And the Jesus that we find in this part of the gospel is not warm. He is not the loving son who will try to care for his mother even as he is dying. This Jesus is challenging our sense of order, our sense of boundaries, and pushing our comfort zones in ways that are uncomfortable to discuss. This Jesus is making very clear that some things in some parts of life can be hard and painful and costly. So on Monday morning, when I first read this scripture, I wondered if there was a better option, perhaps something else in the lectionary. There was not. So I read some commentaries, hoping that one of them would show me exactly where to go and tell me that one little puzzle piece I was making, missing to make this a warm and fuzzy, feel-good kind of story, or at least put it very clear and, plain, and in plain words what the important take-home is. None of the commentaries I found seemed to hold the hidden insight or secret that I had yet to consider, which left me back where I started, on the struggle bus. What do we do with a Jesus who is disowning his family and accusing others of blasphemy, but not just blasphemy, unforgivable blasphemy? What do we do with this version of Jesus that is abrasive and not what we like? This Jesus makes us feel uncomfortable, and therefore we don't like to talk about it. But you see, Jesus has been out in the world, and he's gone out and met people. He's been healing and teaching, and he's caused a stir. We, that's, we like that about Jesus. 
And a lot of people have heard about his work, and many of them followed him back home to Nazareth. But it isn't a warm and happy, smooth homecoming. Jesus has changed. He went out into the world and he interacted with people in ways that his family and those who have always known him didn't expect and maybe wouldn't have approved of. There's a reason they say you can't go home again. Because once you begin to grow out in the world in different ways from the people that you've always known, it's hard to be the person they expect you to be. The Jesus who has come to visit is not the Jesus who left. It'd be easy for us to feel maybe like Mary, his mother, and his siblings, and the religious authorities were foolish, and so clearly wrong. Jesus is not out of his mind, but we are forgetting that we have the benefit of knowing the rest of the story. We finish the book. We know, that Jesus, we know what and who Jesus is because we've seen things in a way that those who are closest to him wouldn't have been able to, especially not yet. And if we're being honest with ourselves, it makes a lot of sense that they couldn't understand what's happening. So we should probably give them a little bit of grace. Because if someone that we loved and cared about started to talk the way Jesus was talking, we too would probably try to get them to be quiet or keep a lower profile. His family was wrong. But I think it's okay to say that they had good intentions and they were trying their best to care for Jesus as best they knew how, but they were missing that bigger picture. So as I was working through this scripture, I struggled to work through the idea that the scribes put forth that whatever was wrong with Jesus was going to cause a divide that was going to make the kingdom divided against itself. And a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. A house divided against itself will not be able to stand. It's as if they're suggesting that Jesus is going to cause this catastrophic divide. But that's the thing about divides, right? The divide's already there. Mary is calling for her son to leave what he has found. He's inside with the outsiders, and she's trying to call him back outside with the insiders. She wants him to go back to what it used to be. The religious leaders are calling for Jesus to abandon this thing that has the potential to shake things up. They are looking to keep things as they are because it is safer to stick to the ways and the things that you know. I think we all get this on some level. There is already a divide between those who are in and those who are out. The divide that they are afraid of happening already exists. It didn't feel particularly good to hear Jesus ignore and dismiss his mother. It doesn't feel good to imagine how that might have felt for her, to hear her own child say, who is my mother? It's hard to think and how to, about how to talk about this as good news, right? When Jesus disowned Mary, it was great. That's not how we that's, that's not how sermons are supposed to go. But if we flip that script, how does it feel to those who are on the inside with Jesus? To those who have been on the outside of church for so long, how does it feel to know that Jesus is with them in that moment, but going not just to stay with them, but to go beyond and say, they are family? How would that have felt? It doesn't feel good to imagine how Mary feels, but it does feel good to imagine how those who had been on the outside for so long might have felt when they heard Jesus say, this is my family. The divide wasn't new then, and it's not new now. Humans are really good at making divides. We divide ourselves from people who don't think like us, who don't talk like us, who don't act like us. We draw lines all over the place, and we make a lot of statements about who is in and who is out. But Jesus didn't create that divide. 
In fact, I'd even suggest that Jesus started to tear it down. He replied to, to his friends who had said, your mother is outside and your brothers are outside and they are calling you. And he says, who are my mother and brothers? And looking at those who sat around them, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. I don't know of a single person in the entire world who hasn't at one point or another felt left out, felt as if they didn't belong. It's very human. We want to be included. We want to know everything. We want to be a part of the things that matter. So when Jesus looked around and declared those present to be his family, when he said, you belong here with me, he wasn't creating a divide. He wasn't bringing some in and leaving others out. He was breaking down walls, moving past what has always been. For, the, for his mother and his siblings, for the religious authorities, and maybe even some of us sitting in this room, that can feel uncomfortable. But for those who have been left out, for those who have never been comfortable, this moment was life changing. Jesus didn't build a divide. He expanded what it meant to be a part of the family. Jesus didn't divide the house. He broke the house, taking down the walls, expanding it, making, more wel making it more welcoming, more spacious, and all the more lovely. Who are my mother and brothers? all who are around me. I pray that as we engage with one another and with our community that we remember this story and don't shy away from continuing this work, that we too try to break down the divides, take down the walls so that we can build a bigger space, a wider welcoming, and expand what it means to be a part of God's family to create a bigger and more diverse and more beautiful kingdom of God. Amen. Our next hymn is number 381. You are invited to stand if you are able. And let us be in prayer. Holy living God, embodiment of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, we bring you our prayers this morning, offering you our joys, our hurts, and our hopes for the world. We offer prayers for our church community, 
the town that we live in, the country that we are a part of, and our entire wider world. We remember those who are suffering economic hardship and insecurity and basic needs, and we pray that abundance might be shared. We pray for those who are suffering with mental illness, finding it difficult to cope. We ask that paths open and hope return. We pray for those who feel rejected, unwanted, and unloved so that they hide their true selves from their friends, their family, and the world. And we ask that you help them to recognize their worth, to see and feel that they are loved unconditionally beyond measure. Open our eyes so that we too may see them as you do, whole and beloved. We hold in prayer those whose lives have been impacted by gun violence and pray for an end to this kind of pain and hurting. We pray for those who suffer illness and injury, asking that your healing grace flow freely. We ask forgiveness for the ways that we have ignored systems of oppression. Open our eyes to help us see and open our mouths to help us speak out. We pray for those who are lonely and isolated, asking for companionship and solace. Today, as always, we pray a prayer of peace. We continue to pray for those whose lives are in the path of destruction, those who have had their entire existence torn apart. We pray for all people and all places where warfare and violence continue to dominate people's worlds. We pray for a path to lasting and true peace where we can learn to love and cherish and care for one another. Keeping these prayers in our hearts, we pray together as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful for the gifts that we receive in our lives, and we invite you to participate in this opportunity of generosity to continue the mission of God's love in the world. We are grateful and we are thankful. With gratefulness, we offer and dedicate these gifts for the continuation of our work in your name. Amen. Friends, let us join together in hymn number 340.
friends, we have been nourished and renewed this day. Go out and share the kingdom of God to all you encounter in the love of God who created us, God who redeemed us, and God who sustains us. Go in peace and share this good news. Amen. Thank you.